Hi guys. This past Saturday morning, January the 11th, 2014, uh, the Lord woke me up early and I was, as I was spending time with Him, He gave me se several uh, prophetic words that I'm going to be bringing to you this week. Um, I was seeking, later that day, I was seeking the Lord for what He wanted to say during our, um, if He wanted to say something through me um, at our Saturday night burn that we, uh, live stream on Saturday nights on Ustream and the Lord gave me this word here and I shared it uh, Saturday night but I'm going to go ahead and um, share it again here because um, many of you didn't get to hear it and so I want you to so I'm going to go ahead and do it again okay the title of this word is called faith I give to you and this is what it says it says, My dearly loved ones, did I not say in my word that I am both the author and finisher of your faith? How can one see beyond the limits that I have set for your eyes? Does my word not say that kings desired to see me but could not? Am I not the one in control of all things? Who can stop a work once I have declared it? Today is the day of great vision. Yes, indeed, what a time I have chosen for you, my beloved. A day of great vision, a day of great faith. Today is a day of great revelation knowledge. Yes, indeed, it is. Today is the day of the releasing of secrets that have been reserved for your day. Rejoice, my children. You are indeed blessed. I open the eyes of the blind. I fill men's hearts with my truth, though deception falls like winter's snow. Revelation comes to my children like spring blossoms budding forth into beautiful arrays of splendor. Truth, my children, my truth comes, brings forth great faith. Today is the day for great faith. Great faith fills my children now. Faith brings every provision. Faith brings authority and power. Faith moves mountains. Faith that transcends comes now to the children of faith. Supernatural faith. Faith as a child comes now to the children of the Most High God. Great exploits shall my children do in my name. Nothing will be able to stop those whose faith is in their God. Praise the Lord. Father, we just thank you for this word. Lord, we thank you, God, for what you're doing, that you're pouring out your spirit. Lord, that you're setting our gifts on fire. Lord, we know that one of the gifts of the spirit is faith. And Lord, we just thank you for supernatural, abundant faith. Lord, we receive it. We believe it and we receive it now in the mighty name of Yeshua. Lord, we just thank you. Amen. Okay, guys. Um... After the Lord gave me this word, a dream came back to my mind. I believe I did a video, I'm pretty sure I did, on this uh, dream that I had. But it's been, I don't know, several months ago. Um, and it was, a, it was a dream that the Lord uh, took me, my family actually, to a city called A Life of Faith. If you want to go back and, and uh, find that video and watch the, the whole thing. But I'm just going to tell a part of that now. Uh, my family and I, we were walking down um, a dirt road. It was a brand new cut road, a newly cut road. And on the side of the road was two heavy machinery. And actually the men were still sitting in those machines. And they were the machines that had cut the road. And so we were walking down this road. And I knew that we were going to check out a new community. Uh, the only thing that I knew about it was that it was new and it was for Christians and we were going my family were considering moving to this new community but we were going to go check it out so we were walking down this road to, to it and we came to two ladies and they were dressed they had on blue dresses with white aprons and white bonnets on their head and they were working on the side of the road and they had sickles in their hands and they were swinging the sickles, cutting the grass on the side of the road. And when they saw us, they stood up and they smiled really 
warm and welcoming and 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 did their hands like this to come on come on you know welcome welcome to the city of life of faith is what they said and that was the first time that I had heard the, the name of the city and we we went on uh, down the road and we went over a hill and uh, we were we were going up a hill and we could not see the city, but I was beginning to be able to see a big sign, and it said, City of Life of Faith. And as I had been walking along this road, I was thinking, you know, what must this city look like? And I knew it was new, so I knew that there there probably wouldn't be many people there, but I expected there to be people there, and I expected maybe that there were some buildings already, and maybe there were some houses. And I thought, well, it is new, so maybe, you know, there's tents, maybe people are living in tents. Um, but when we walked over the hill and the city was down in a valley and I could see it, uh, there was absolutely not one single person in the city. It was empty. And along the outskirts of the city, there was ch some children playing. But that was it. There was no adults anywhere. No one was in the city itself. The only thing that was in the city was there was like a, like a car lot that was rows of cars and they were brand new shiny cars and I don't know a lot about cars but they were expensive cars like maybe a Rolls Royce or something and uh, and there was a lot of them and they were like I say in perfect alignment and then um, past those cars there was blankets laid out on the ground and they were uh, in perfect perfectly lined up too, row after row after row of these blankets as though they were just sitting, waiting for the occupants to come and to take them. And what I noticed about the blankets were they were the exact same size, but they were all different colors. Okay, so what I believe that the cars in this city represents is supernatural provision. Ab abundance. Abundant supernatural provision that God has for His children in these last days. Guys, God has taken us to a new place in Him with supernatural, abundant faith. Um, and I believe that the blankets represented um, our mantles to do uh, power and authority to do the job that God has called each one of us to do in these last days. So, uh, and what I noticed about, you know, thinking about the different colors of the blankets is that there's different callings, there's different giftings, and that's why there were different colors. But guys, this was just in the city waiting, and I, I believe that the Lord is saying that it's very soon that He's going to take us to this place, this city called a life of faith, where the children of God are moving in um, a faith that we have not ever moved in to this point. And you know, the Lord has said in some of my words before, uh, about our gifts being set on fire and he showed us that in visions that gifts are coming are coming to the children of God and uh, faith is one of the one of the spiritual gifts actually and you know God has given each one of us a measure of faith but um, but when we're flowing in the gift of faith then that supersedes the faith that our normal level uh, of faith and so that's just really exciting. So I'm believing for that. I want mountain moving faith. I want that great faith. And I know we can read the word. You know, faith comes by hearing the word. So we can grow our own faith. But in, and then life sometimes, you know, it grows our faith. We, you know, as we continue to walk in the Lord and to read his word, you know, our faith grows stronger and stronger and stronger. But guys, the Lord showed me that this place that he's taken the church there is nobody there right now, but there is great abundance and and great power and great authority, and we know that's true. This this waiting on us is coming to us. I believe it's coming now, and Lord, we just God, we want it. Lord, we just say thank you, Father, thank you, Lord. We need that that supernatural that supernatural abundance of faith, God, and we just thank you for it, Lord. I want to read just a couple scriptures. Um, Luke 10, 23 through 24 says, And he turned to his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things that you see. 
For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see what you see and have not seen them and to hear what you hear and have not heard them. Praise the Lord. God is releasing secrets in these days. Okay, Daniel, I want to read another one. Daniel 12, 4 says, But you, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. We know that that's the days that we live in, that these secrets are being released. The things that has been held back until these last days. It's exciting being a child of God in these last days, isn't it? Okay, I'm going to read one more, and this is 1 Corinthians 1, 26 through 31. For you see your calling, brothers, that not many wise men according to the flesh are called, not many mighty, not many noble, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And God has chosen the base things of the world and the things which are despised and things which are not in order to bring to nothing things that are so that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him you are in Christ Jesus who of God is made to us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, so that according as it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. Guys, this is talking about callings. God doesn't choose the ones that you might think that he would choose. You know, I think about uh, King David, you know, the sons of Jesse, when they all came um, in front of the prophet, uh, and each one of them, he, the prophet said, nope, not you, nope, not you, nope, not you. And it was, but, but, you know, everybody thought that those were the ones that would have been chosen. But no, it was David that was chosen. And he was just a little shepherd boy. Um, so, you know, I know that there's many of you out there that thinks that God would never use you, that God can't use you. But you know what? God made you. He formed your mouth. He formed you, and he put his gifts inside of you, and there's nothing that God can't do. God can, matter of fact, he chooses the very weak vessels, and he chooses the things that are despised so that he will get the greatest amount of glory. So just have faith and know that, that God can use you to do mighty, mighty things in these great days, and he can give you faith beyond your wildest imagination and I know that that's exactly what he's promising us in this word that he's going to do well guys that's all I have for today God bless you I love you bye bye